everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh. Thanks for joining me on this beautiful Friday. Get your Friday on. Today, it's full ed. I love doing full lids because I, I, I tend to have a bunch of small topics that kind of pile up over time. And so I, I release them on a Friday because it's small snippets of different things. Today we're talking about TikTok potentially being banned. Just Fam lies about a sponsorship. Ooh. Fathering autism goes real life with someone who has a problem with them. And Doherty doesn't finally respond. What did she say? Let's find out. But before we get to that, everybody, it's Friday. And so everybody over my first tier gets to be on the wheel this week. Next week, it's Friday the 31st. You will also get to be on the wheel. Everybody who's a member will be on that wheel. So without further ado, we spin the wheel. We do a little dance. Someone wins a prize. Yeah. yeah. JJ, hope there's not more than one of those. You win a prize. Reach out to me at josh at thedadchallengepodcast.com with your shirt size and your address, and I'm going to hook you up. Let's go. So as you guys know, I absolutely hate TikTok. It is the Wild West of child exploitation. It's got so much disgusting garbage on it that is being fed into our teenagers and our children's eyes and ears 24 hours a day. The app is super toxic. It doesn't protect its creators either because I've been banned on there just for doing the shit I do, the same shit I do on this platform. Okay, and the CEO of TikTok has to, has to go in front of Congress and talk about you know why we shouldn't be banning TikTok. And he says no, no. And one of the things he says is that. I don't have the clip, but he basically says, no, no, we're pretty fair. No one gets banned on there. And he's such a damned liar. Okay. It's very skewed in one political direction for sure. If anything, it's also skewed in the direction of exploitation is good. Um, they, they celebrate people that have many, many, many mental disorders on there and it's all celebrated and everybody's like, yay for you for having multiple personality disorder. Yay. It's like very, very toxic. There's predators on there galore because it's, it's, in U.S. alone, I think 150 million people are on TikTok. So there's millions and millions of predators on that app. Uh, we've we've discovered so many people. There's a there's a bunch of minor girls on there that dance provocatively, and one of them was Ava Madjuri, and she almost got killed because of this app uh, by parasocial relationships being developed, and a guy came to her house and tried to kill her. Uh, this app is just it's just atrociously garbage. Okay, and. All you really need to know about TikTok, and, and so the reason they want to ban TikTok is because it's a Chinese-owned spy op. That's basically what it is, and everybody laughs about that, and they think it's funny. It's not. Guys, I don't know if you're aware of what's going on in the world today, but shit's going to go down real soon. As soon as you hear the words China invades Taiwan, get ready for World War III. I wonder if I'm even allowed to say that. But that's what's going to start happening, okay? China is making a big move to do something. They just stood in solidarity with Russia who is fighting Ukraine right now, and they want Taiwan because they think that they are entitled to Taiwan. Now, China will do anything in its power to subvert every Western democracy because China wants to be the world power. Now, that's just the base of this whole thing. And so China has done things like steal, steal ideas, steal so technology and software, spies, does everything. China is a communist country. Any person who is, who is a Chinese citizen who owns property here in Canada specifically, the Chinese government actually owns that. If you are, if you are a citizen of a communist country, you don't own anything. It's owned by the state. Okay, so Chinese, there were Chinese operatives buying farmland near military bases and everything else. It's just China is in our country right now. There's a big giant kerfuffle about this guy named Han Dong who was voted on, I think, in Mississauga or somewhere near Toronto and bus loads of Chinese nationals and teenagers and, and, and old people were bussed in to vote for Han Dong and, his, and, their, and Han Dong's name was written on their arm. Okay, there has been election interference. There's allegedly been election interference in my country with China. Okay, and it's a big deal. It's not just a funny. It's not just like they're not. It's no one's thinking it's a conspiracy theory anymore because basically Trudeau has said, yeah, it looks like it's happening. CSIS, which is our FBI, has come forward with through global news and told us that um, even Han Dong 
spoke to a Chinese national and said, don't release these two Canadian prisoners yet because it would only benefit the, the it would only benefit the conservative party. Shit is going down and China is making big moves right now. One of the biggest moves China ever made was to subvert Western culture by implementing TikTok. And the only proof you ever need to know about what China is doing is that the same, there's a, there's a different type of app available in China. It is TikTok, but it's different. You can't watch the same shit that our teenagers can watch in China, okay? You can watch all the people with all the mental illnesses here and being celebrated for like multiple personality disorders. That guy named Je Jeff, what's his face? He's like telling kids to come into his Patreon and like talk to me. Okay, there's lots of gender stuff going on. Like people are like, here's my pronouns for I'm a frog self, this and that, all the, it's, it's bananas. And if you go read the comments, it's all celebrated. Okay, if you if that same person does that on YouTube, go read the comments. The difference is super stark because TikTok will remove people who have a dissenting view about this social contagion that China wants to input input into Western civilization. I know that sounds such a maybe I have the tinfoil hat on, maybe it is, but that's what I see it as. Okay, it's a super toxic app. Not only that, but it allows child exploitation into a massive degree. It doesn't care. There are so many minors on that platform, and I'm talking about like young teenagers who are thirst traps, which should be absolutely illegal for that to happen, okay? But you can't get that same content in China. The only thing you can see in China on TikTok are kids playing instruments, kids doing good things, studying, like it's completely different. India has completely banned TikTok. It's completely gone, okay? I, I changed my VPN to Hong Kong to see if I could see what I can access with TikTok. It is banned in Hong Kong. Okay, it's not banned all over China, but China has a different style of app, which is sister app to the same thing. And so the guy had to get in front of Congress and say, you know, why shouldn't we ban this? Because not only is it doing the social contagion part, but it's also a massive spyware for China. And I know a lot of people don't realize how this works, but every time you log on a TikTok or look at an ad or press a button on your phone because TikTok's connected to it, it gets recorded. That data is worth billions of dollars, okay? And you get on these apps, these free apps, and I'm talking YouTube, Instagram, Meta, which is Instagram too, but all these apps, you get them for free and you get to make money on them, but you, you pay for it with your data. Now, we all basically know that. Our data is being sold to advertisers to, 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 so we can get directed advertising to eyeballs. If I say to my phone, like if I was shopping for wifey, like this Christmas I was shopping for wifey for some underwear or whatever, right? Some nice underwear for nursing or whatever. And I just got ads for underwear for months after that. Okay, it's listening. It's being directed and your phone is listening. It's not just when you're on Facebook it sees it. Your phone is listening and you allow it to because you press agree to the terms of service. The same thing with TikTok, although it's getting sent to China and China is using that as a massive, as, as a massive subversion to the, to the culture. If you don't think that's, that's happening, you are crazy in your head. That's, and that's why Trump tried to ban it. Data has gotten so important, it becomes a tool to be used against a culture. China understands that it can operate its culture the way it wants because it's communist, right? You can't. You can't protest in China about certain things. Education systems put in place because it directly feeds into the communist government. Xi Jinping is the president and god of the country. He's, you can't subvert him. Communist countries do that on purpose. Communism leaks into a lot of democratic policies and liberal policies as well because they want, and because if you see how liberals, especially in my country, want to operate the education system, that should tell you everything you need to know. As soon as you see less parents, more government, that's communism, okay, to a degree social communism, or whatever you want to call it. And that's happening in my country and your country. China is doing everything it can and has been for the past 20 years to, to do what it needs to do in order to make big moves, which you're going to see in our lifetime, if not in the next five, to, if not in the next couple of years. If, if it's not this year, it's definitely next year that they're going to make a move on Taiwan. Anyway, I, I know it's getting political and everything, but anyway, so we come back to the TikTok ban. And I think it, on the basis alone that TikTok allows so much child exploitation, it should be banned. Now, you could say the same thing about YouTube and Instagram and everything else, but TikTok is just a whole other level of disgusting. It's easy to go viral on TikTok. It's easy to grow a platform. And I'm just so sick of people doing shitty dances like this to answer questions. Okay, this, this was the thing that it should have been banned for just instantly. Just the, the stupid, hey, I'm gonna answer this one question, but I'm gonna do this dance first. Yes, right? Here's the question. Hey, Josh, do you like pizza? And I do a dance. 
Yes. And that's how they answer the question. Why did that become a thing? F off. Okay. It allows people like Taylor Frankie Paul to get famous and become this like big disgusting person. Fame is not good for anybody. Social media influencing culture has become a toxic wasteland of cancerous, disgusting bullshit. Okay. Influencers are now people who are like, oh, you're an influencer. It's, it's, it's weird. Influencer culture is disgusting and it's only getting worse. Needless to say, there's tons of porn on TikTok. There's so many thirst traps of women just spreading their OnlyFans and it's, it's become, it's, it's very unsafe. And I know a lot of you out there, and I know I'm going to judge you a little bit, have children under puberty age who are on TikTok. And I'm mean, not, I mean, they're scrolling through it. And I'm telling you, TikTok is going to, that algorithm that China has created wants that to feed into your kids' eyeballs. And it's on purpose what they feed into them. Porno. Exploitation. Challenges that could hurt them. Gender ideologies, mental illnesses and celebrating them. That's all done on purpose, everybody. And you can tell by the way the world works right now and how everything is being transformed that it's working. Okay, they're doing what they are meant to do. And that's why this app needs to be banned. So he gets in front of the thing. But here's the thing about when these, these reps ask this guy questions. These reps don't know shit about anything. And so what they need to do is find representatives or bring in professionals that know what they're talking about because these guys have no idea half the time what they're doing. So listen to this. Mr. Chu, does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? Only if the user turns on the Wi-Fi. I, I'm sorry, I may not understand that. So if I have a TikTok app on my phone and my phone is on my home Wi-Fi network, does TikTok access that network? Yes. You will have to, to get access the network to get connections to the internet, if, if that's the question. Is it possible then that it could access other devices on that home Wi-Fi network? Congressman, that we do not do anything that is beyond any industry norms. Um, I believe the answer to your question is no. It could be technical. Let me get back to you. So basically, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But I, I see where he's getting at. And a lot of people made fun of him for asking that question. But the question was, can it access other devices on that Wi-Fi network? And he says it's not meant to. He didn't answer no. He says it might be no, but it's not. He says, can it? Is it possible for it to do that? And he doesn't answer the question. And the, and the answer is, yes, it is. And that's the whole idea. They, he can get there and, and, he's, and, he, and this guy might not even be lying about that. Yeah, it doesn't do that right now. But could it? And the answer is, yes, it could. I know this is tinfoil hat, right, guys? I know this is all tinfoil hat. But consider this for a second. How much shit runs on the internet right now? If China decides to take back down a national network of internet, shit collapses. I'm talking about everything collapses. Okay, there was, I think there's a, in, in the ports, I think in California or somewhere, there's a big port somewhere where everything was bought, all the machinery is Chinese owned and bought and connected to networks where China can just press a button, kill it. And they, they're trying to get rid of that, trying to change all that right now. China has, has been playing 40 chess while the US and Canada has been playing not even checkers. We've been playing like sorry or something like that. We're playing Candy Crush. That's what's going on, okay? Josh Hawley here, I know he's not the most popular politician in the world, obviously, but he says something important here, and as parents, we should listen. Yeah, exactly, and the reason is, Laura, this app is basically digital fentanyl. That's what it is. It is not designed to make our lives better. It is designed to disrupt. It is designed to get into our kids' head. You look at the amount of suicide promotional material, for example, that's on TikTok. It's off the charts. Some of that was brought up at the hearing today. As a parent of three little kids, I don't want my kids on TikTok. Yep. I'm scared to death of what they will find there. And that app is by design to get yep. into our kids' head, by kids' heads, by design to push this content to them. That's what they're doing here. That's why the Chinese government won't allow it. But they, of course, want Americans to use it because they want to disrupt our society and they want a back door into everything that we're doing, everything that we're seeing, everywhere that we're going. That's what TikTok is. W where was the lie? It's exactly what's happening, everybody. There's so much Chinese technology in my country and your country that can be turned off like that. If you don't think so, you're not, you don't know what technology is, is capable of doing. Here's, here's a troubling TikTok trend. A new TikTok trend is sending teens right to the ER. Experts warning about what they call a troubling trend on TikTok. TikTok challenge taking a tragic turn. A 10-year-old boy is dead. Teens on TikTok self-diagnosing themselves with rare mental health disorder that they don't have. The hashtag disassociative identity disorder. It is owned by a Chinese company. The TikTok has admitted that it has sent user data to China. Collect our data, manipulate information, poison the minds of... Oh 
Oh my god. You're gonna put a song over some shit! Turn the song down! The point was, yes, there's a whole bunch of people doing- you remember the Tide Pod challenge? You got people strangling themselves for, for challenges and dying. You got people doing other challenges like stealing, breaking the law, everything else. TikTok is a social contagion, and I- I-, I, I prove me wrong. Now, does TikTok do some good things? Yes, there has been some people that have commented about the community of TikTok where they never had a community before and TikTok allowed them to be a part of, find to be part of a community. But a lot of those communities are not safe. Okay, a lot of them are really not. So I'm gonna, again, Jeffrey Marshall, bring him up again. He's been he's been trending a lot about being, you know, I want you to, your, your parents are wrong about everything and you should be able to go no contact and I'm gonna teach you how to do that if you join my Patreon. People like him exist on that platform and it's disgusting. If your kid is on TikTok, get them off TikTok. And again, one of the reasons I'm, I'm for this, obviously, is because family vloggers will have to find a different way. Alicia from Docker D doesn't have her biggest fan base on TikTok. She gets more, I mean, her kids get bullied every single day in there, but she gets more positive comments over there than she does on YouTube. YouTube, it's basically negative comments and she filters them and she gets completely downvoted. Now, YouTube is going to take over once TikTok is banned if it does get banned, if it does get banned, right? YouTube is pushing really hard for the shorts. They're telling us creators, if you make shorts, we'll pay you now. So shorts are gonna be on, are gonna, people are, and here's the thing, people get so upset. And you, if you go to TikTok right now, I mean, I know I'm telling you to go there, and you just type in TikTok ban and look at all the creators, the ones with big counts who have built their entire platforms on that, who have built their entire fan base on there, are scared to death that they're gonna have to go get real jobs. Because YouTube doesn't work the same way. You gotta work harder to make money on YouTube. You don't just get to go viral instantly like that because YouTube doesn't have a subversive freaking algorithm. That's why YouTube isn't trying to destroy America, whereas TikTok is. They're going to have a harder time and YouTube will, will be like disseminating that shit way more than TikTok ever does. Plus, tic YouTube cr protects creators like me who call out shitty creators. TikTok doesn't. If I if when I went on there, I call out shitty creators. I just like Maya Knight, for example, her fan, all her fans have to do is come and mass report me and I'm gone like that. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if my content didn't break the rules. They just did it because they don't want people like me calling out their top creators who are toxic and cancerous. And that's, that's the truth of it all. So I'm happy to see all these vloggers and influencers who've built their platforms on this thing go, it's time for you to get real jobs. You know, if you've built your entire platform on social media on one platform, I'm sorry for you, but you're dumb and you deserve it. So I hope TikTok gets banned. I, I don't know if it will. It looks like it's gonna happen. A lot of people are pretty scared right now. And you know, something will just take its place. And I do get that. A lot of people will say that, but it'll be an American owned company who will have the same type of algorithms like Instagram, like Facebook, like YouTube. It, it won't be subversive and toxic. It won't be. It won't be allowed to be. Clearly, and a lot of people are just like, oh, this is this is my this is free speech and everything else. Um, but there I, I, I would I, I would agree with you if it wasn't so blatantly obvious what China was trying to do. And I would also agree with you if there wasn't other platforms you could just port over to, because you can, there's lots. So I hope TikTok gets banned and I'm gonna have a cake with candles the day it does. So that's awesome. Let's move on to the next topic. So this is a quick one here. Uh, fathering aut uh, Someone reached out to me about fathering autism. This is a person who just, who doesn't like the exploitation of children. And there's a lot of comments on fathering autism in Abby's Facebook group, which is, uh, I think it's called Scylla's Stuff and Things, which is the stupidest name ever. If you know anything about fathering autism, he is a guy on YouTube that's been uh, taking advantage of his uh, autistic daughter for, I don't know, five, six, eight years. I don't know how long. He's made millions of dollars and has exploited this kid in so many ways. The first video I ever did about him was he's teaching, he's showing everybody how she uses the bathroom. Okay, that really got me. Then there's been many videos ever since then, and he called me out. He's like, I couldn't even sit at the same table with him. I'm not even on the same level. And he he opened up a, uh, he tried to do a business that failed. Um, he had one of his ex-employees come on my show and call him out. Um, oh yeah, they're just, they're gross. And then Priscilla, who's the wife, has this, uh, used her, used the platform built by Abby to create her Scylla stuff and things where she sells Slime Life disgusting makeup. Okay, and she's made a pretty penny doing that as well. Now, these people have been exploiting this child forever. And the thing about that gets everybody is that she will never be able to give informed consent. First of all, because she has autism and IDD and she just doesn't have the mental capacity to do so. Plus, she's nonverbal. So she doesn't have the mental capacity to do so. And even on her iPad, there's not like a no film button or anything like that. It's like donut cookie, Dunkin Donuts. Like they, they are they, they don't allow her. It, it almost feels like they're holding her back from being able to communicate that she doesn't like doing it. And we can tell by her body language she doesn't like being on the video most of the time. 
Okay, and they take her to places where she's uncomfortable and like hockey games and caves. They know she's scared of ceilings. It's just gross. These people are gross and I've been covering them for a long time. But Asa goes real world, right? Back at it again with Abby looking uncomfy AF is what this person says. And then Father Autism writes this. It's really going to piss you off when you see the vlog and realize she's actually had a good time. It might also piss you off when you find out that someone contacted your employer the one that helps children with disabilities, and then sent screenshots of your continued effort to bully and harass a parent of a disabled child. So he's using Abby as his shield, right? Bully and harass the parent of a disabled child. You're the one exploiting this disabled child, Asa. You guys exploited her for every penny you've ever made. The director of nursing, human resources, and the president of the company, to be specific, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Now. Asa hated the fact that this person leaves negative comments. And so what did Asa do instead of just ignoring it? He went and found where she works, reached out to her company, specifically Human Resources, the Director of Nursing, and the President of the company to say, hey, look, I'm a YouTuber who brings awareness to autism, and this woman is bullying me. And this person could lose her job. Fathering autism could go on and exploit his child and make as much money as he wants. There's nothing really holding him back from doing this. There's no laws against this yet. Okay, and I doubt there ever will be in Florida. Even when she turns 18, I doubt he'll stop. Nobody watches this show for Asa and Priscilla. I promise you that. Every time Priscilla puts Abby on her on her Facebook, the posts and likes and engagement is like 15 times higher than her just doing like, help me win a prize somewhere. Help me win this cruise on this slime life thing. Nobody watches the shit unless Abigail is on there. And so he decided to go real world because he's pissed off that this person's calling him out for real for good reason. But what Asa fails to realize, I know you guys aren't mocking the look on her face, zero tact, because they have a thumbnail with her mocking Abigail doing the same thing she does. No, we're not mocking. Sometimes we take photos, we make the same face she does because many people don't understand that Abby doesn't smile for photos. She smiles when she's happy at the moment. See what he's admitting right there? In contrast, she looks mad, serious, etc. compared to our smiles, so people will ask what's wrong, and there isn't actually anything wrong. Zero clue. I mean, he's completely contradicting himself. So she smiles when she's happy at the moment. He's admitting it right there. Abigail barely smiles on the show, okay? And generally when it comes to getting food and stuff like that, when they're going to go out to eat, she'll smile. Because that's what they use to reward her for doing the things that she, they want her to do, okay? So he admits there that she does show the emotion that is registering in her heart. And then, and then mocking her face. And they've done that multiple times. They've mocked the stimming. I know that Isaiah has mocked her stimming multiple times. Um, and so the thing that you have to understand about these people is, is that they will stop at nothing to, to, to continue doing what they're doing without being called out for it. Fathering autism is the, one of the grossest exploiters on this platform. And I can't believe he's allowed to do it. I can't believe YouTube, and he's not the only one. There is a bunch of them out there who do this. They will exploit children's um, disabilities. They will exploit, exploit children who are, who, are, who are terminal. I don't even like, and you guys know how I feel about that. I don't, I, I know I got a bunch of pushback for fighting back against those, for, for calling out those, those women who were calling out that one rare genetic disorder and the, the kids that were going to die. I don't care. And I'll stand on this until the day I die. It is not that child's responsibility to be content for you to expose something, right? To bring awareness to something because you can bring awareness to that one thing without exposing your child to the internet every single day in a TikTok. Okay, and since then, those two creators have stopped. Not because of me. They said it wasn't because of me, and good for them. Good for them. Okay, maybe they got enough pushback to realize he's right. Maybe I wasn't right about the way I went about it. You're right, and I have since said that. Okay, but in the end, it, it got solved. These women were shamed into the exploitation they were doing, and they stopped. And that's it. I'll say it time and time again. It is none of these kids' responsibility to be the topic or the the zoo animal to raise awareness to anything they don't consent they cannot consent to it and i don't care if it does good i know a lot of people be mad at me for saying that but i don't care because my platform for the most part is to be the voice for those kids who don't have a voice and they don't have a voice if you build up a million person platform and you make millions of dollars off disabled children and children who are going to die or children having these these diseases and everything else I, I have no respect for you i think you're a bad person fathering autism is that bad of a person okay don't forget this guy also has a kid that he never talks about it got exposed a little while ago never paid child support then he was taken to court for it and then he says he's paid child support but apparently all the money allegedly is in Scylla's name and so they can 
skirt how much he has to pay and everything else. It sounds like IRS needs to be called, to be honest with you. But this guy completely forsook one of his own blood children for her whole entire life and, and didn't tell anybody about it. He's a real piece of work, okay? And I won't stop talking about him. So I wanted to call that out just so you guys are aware that he will go real world. So if you're going to call him out, make sure your information's not in your public platform, okay? Because he will go real world on you. He's just upset he's being called out. Because he is. He's upset. But upset enough to call out someone who has like eight followers on Facebook to ruin their life because you don't like what they had to say. Again, don't forget, when you put your shit on the internet, okay, expect pushback, expect people's opinions on it because you're looking for it anyway. You can't just get the good opinions. You should expect all types of opinions. I get all types of opinions on my work all the time. It's part and parcel. So you don't get to choose what side of the internet you want to have on your side. Okay? If you put your shit out there, it's going to be dismantled. That's... I don't understand why influencers don't realize this yet. Pick and choose. And, and a lot of people want this for their kids. Isn't that crazy? So Father Autism, douche dad of the day. <laughs> Okay, so next we're gonna talk about Jess Fam. As you know, I don't like Jess Fam. She's a piece of poo. And more recently too, with her exposing her daughter's sexuality and everything on the internet as like a soft launch and making it part of the content and making money off it, I absolutely had any amount of respect to her, which was none, is now in the negatives, okay? Jess Fam is a disgusting piece of trash. And I, I'm telling you this, Jess Fam's kids are gonna hate her. I think one of the oldest stepkids already doesn't want to be in videos and doesn't want to be around them. And it's getting to the point where as these kids age into this, they're going to start seeing that their mom is a narcissistic person who's stuck at 17 years old. And they're not going to want to have a part in this. All their friends are going to know that her mom has had threesomes on the internet because she has said it. They're going to know all about the dirty secrets and all the shit that she's ever done because she tells everybody about it. She celebrates it. She thinks she's the bomb diggity fresh for being a disgusting piece of garbage. And so... And she lies about everything. Every video she puts out now is absolute and utter clickbait. Every single bit of it. And that's how you know if a channel is dying. Because Jess Fam used to get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views. And now she's down like 80% from that. She still makes good money. But not like she was making before. And she's, and, she's, and she's starting to step into irrelevance. Because people are starting to see what she does is wrong. She lost all her friends. She's had so much drama out there. She called out teenagers during COVID on a live it was crazy what this woman has done. So she's just, she's an icky one. She's just yuck, right? Jess is just like trash. There's only one word that could describe Jess perfectly. Trash. Trash diggity juice. Sorry. Anyway, and the reason, and another thing she does is she does these sponsors ads all the time. She gets tons of money for these things. And she, this one, she lied by the way. So let's look, let's look at this one. Yep. So as you guys know, I recently went through my closet and I completely purged and now I'm doing that to every room in my house. I just did it to my bathroom. Because they're moving and for some reason she hasn't talked about it yet. It's really weird. But I think the sale of her home has fallen through twice. Uh-oh. Maybe you shouldn't have talked about when your shit flooded. Right? They're, they're, they want content so badly to the point that they will literally throw themselves under the bus for their future. Because, oh, the house flooded. I need to make this content, right? And now there's people who can go out and see that her house flooded. And they're like, I don't want that. If your house is flooded, there's probably water damage in the floors and then there's probably mold and shit. I don't want that anymore. So, oops. You want to say hi? What's it doing, man? There's the Gus. What's up? What are you smelling? Who's your good boy? my good boy. Oh. Mm. You're a good boy. Okay, okay, go. Cool. But I came across something that is so nostalgic for me in kind of a strange way. Let me explain. I'm gonna talk about it on here because it is so important. You may or may not know that my birth of my last baby was pretty intense, pretty traumatic to my body, and I was at risk for all kinds of different things like prolapse, urinary incontinence, the list goes on. And you want more? I was actually on bed rest for a while. And anyway, when I was reorganizing my bathroom, I came across these. And the Did you come across a brand new pack of fresh starts? Did you? Brand new? These once upon a time saved my life. I feel like I just need to put this out into the universe for whoever needs to hear it. Two thirds of women at some point in their life in the US experience bladder incontinence. And <laughs> She's like, I just found this. This isn't an ad or anything. But two thirds of the world's women have gone through things in their pee holes and stuff. And it's just in, in, uh, incontinence. Is that peeing yourself? Incontinence? 
cough. Some way. One in three women can experience temporary bladder incontinence during their pregnancies, and with each additional pregnancy, your risk goes higher and higher. You know it's fake because she doesn't speak like this, because she's dumb. And she's reading a script. You dumbass. This particular brand is the Fit Right Fresh Start. These are the best on the market, in my opinion. For a few in your opinion? Is that opinion paid for by Arm & Hammer? Is that your opinion? Come on, you dumbass. Oh, I, it just bugs me because she's such a liar. Why would you lie about this? For reasons. One, this is the only product line that is infused with the power of Arm & Hammer's baking soda. <laughs> Or odor control. Someone anyway, I'm not gonna let her continue. Arm and Hammer can kiss my ass. If you head over to Jess Fam Snark, this is the this is the one. This product is new. They didn't exist when her youngest was born yet. She says she used them and just happened to find them cleaning out her bathroom. Nice made up story for your ad. And she says and it has ad written up there, right? So this product didn't even exist when her youngest was born. Obviously, it's a brand new package. And if you used it, why is it a brand new package? Why would you lie about that? It's so easy to make up another thing. Hey, when I wish I had these when I was pregnant. Because 80 million women suffer incontinence because of pregnancy and blah, blah, blah. I wish I had these things because they're the only ones infused with olive vera gel and, and like moon dust. The only ones that smell like raspberries. They're infused with frog semen for some reason. I don't know if it works though for all that shit. All she had to do was say, I wish I had these. So she lied. She cut it out of her video because she didn't want comments because she got called out big time. So she left it up on her Instagram because she still wanted to get paid, but she cut it out of her video. And I wonder if Arm & Hammer knows she cut it out of her video. Or she's, and now if you see it in another one coming up, because she's gonna have to change her wording because she lied. So I wonder if Arm & Hammer, who probably paid her a hefty penny for that, five to $10,000 for that ad, is pissed off because now she's getting called out for lying about a product she never used. And she's like, this is my favorite product, this is that. She's just showing how fake and disgusting she is. And she'll do anything for money, including exploit her children. She's gross. Jess fam, douche mom of the day. So recently, uh, there's a creator called Cursed Eye who did a video on um, Doherty Dozen. I don't know what it was, but it, 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 uh, it got Alicia to actually respond, finally. And I think Alicia's only responding because shit's spiraling out of control for her. Let's take this all in consideration in a nice little, nice little pile before we read the comments, okay? Alicia takes in two kinship children, and she's like, they're family, they're my kids now. If you're in my house, you're my kid, call me mom, blah, 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 right? Exploits the living shit out of the kids the literal moment they step into her home, okay? Those kids go pretty viral a lot on her TikTok. Deshaun and Nevaeh both especially get lots of disgusting comments from adults. Deshaun from adult women and Nivea from adult men on TikTok and YouTube and everything else. And it's kind of gross. Okay. And Alicia sees that they're going viral. And so she uses them in a lot of content. Things start getting a little bit out of control when they, everybody sees Nivea sad. She doesn't want to be in videos and everything else. And people are, are commenting. And then we, we get, we, we get, we get some information from Nivea and Deshaun's uh, biological mother who comes out and is now continuing to call her out and saying, I don't want my kids on there, I don't want this and that, and people are now calling her out. And it's become this whole kerfuffle, it's become this whole dramatic thing where everybody's on one side or the other or against both or for both or whatever, okay? But no matter what you think about all this, regardless where you stand on all this situation, none of this ever happens, okay? None of it without Alicia exploiting those two children. Okay, none of it, none of this is exposed. No one knows their names. No one knows Shauna. No one knows Shauna's whole world and her problems. Okay, no, none of this drama ever happens without Alicia doing what Alicia does best, which is exploiting children for cash. Alicia even says in some of her videos, like if they go home, they're not taking their PS4s with them. They're not taking their, their shoes and their expensive things I bought for them because their mom will just sell it. Okay, she said that. She said that out loud on a channel. Okay, she's exploited them to a massive degree. We've seen Deshaun with hickeys on his neck. We've seen her say, oh, Deshaun's girlfriend stayed over and all this stuff. We know that the, the girlfriends stay overnight. Uh, Alex's and Deshaun's girlfriend both stay overnight. Okay, which is crazy. Don't forget, Alicia is just a caretaker for these two children. Okay, she is not their mother. She is not that role in their life. She is a safe, she's supposed to be a safe place for them to, to chill while their mother gets better if she gets better. Okay, that's it. They were not meant to be exploited, okay? They're not meant to be, like, if you're watching someone else's kids and you're like, yeah, you can have your girlfriend sleep over here. You, I would be so angry if I saw a video of my kid with hickeys on his neck. I would be so upset. 
You are supposed to be taking care of these kids, not exploiting them, not making their life worse. And Alicia just thinks by buying expensive sneakers and by taking them out for nails and just feeding them a bunch of bullshit, that that's going to be the only thing that they need. And that's not what they need, specifically Nevaeh. She needs love. She needs attention. And Alicia doesn't give her kids any of that shit. None of it. We can see by the amount of time she spends on the internet. Okay? So no matter what you think, regardless of what you think of Shauna, maybe she's trying to do this for money, whatever, I don't care. And you guys know my stance on this. I don't think the kids should be with Shauna. I think if Shauna gets better, then they should. But that's not where they need to be. They need to be in a safe, private environment. And that could be at that could be with the Doherty dozen. If 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 Alicia decides she's not gonna show them anymore, cool beans. But she didn't. She did this video. And now we know that Deshaun has blocked his, his bio bio mom. And so instead of bringing Neve, he brings in a picture, and you don't think there's anything wrong with that? Are you out of your mind, Alicia? The mom specifically asked you not to show her children, and you were ignoring her. And there is potential parental alienation going on because Deshaun and Nevaeh both blocked their bio mom. I mean, it could be their choice, but you have to take it into consideration that there is parental alienation happening. Because Alicia has a lot to protect here, a lot of money protect, to protect. So, with all that said, everything going down, and what you believe, at least I think we can all agree, none of this happens, none of it, without Alicia being Alicia, right? Can we agree on that? Okay, cool. So this is what happened. Alicia writes back to Kirstein and says, just to clear something up, I'm still allowed to post them on our social media if they want to join our videos. It was agreed upon in court 11 months ago by the judge with myself, mom, dad, and CPS. So she is saying without, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that she's allowed. The court said, yeah, exploit these kids, go ahead, show them on your social media. And you know what? I could possibly believe that because CPS, judges who are likely older, probably just don't understand where, what Alicia was doing, they probably didn't get it, okay? And Alicia grew hugely since those two kids came in, so don't forget that. So they're like, well, yeah, you're just, you know, social media, it doesn't matter to me. I don't think, and if it's true, and I'd like to see the documents, there's just saying, look, I make money doing this, and so I need these kids to be in my vlog to make money off of. I wonder if she said that, because CPS is behind in that, and so are the judges. There's no way judges like, oh yeah, cool, sounds good. It's just social media. That's probably what it was portrayed as by her lawyer. Oh, you know, everybody else posts their kids, why can't she? Right? And the mom agreed to it, apparently the dad agreed to it, and maybe there is a document. But I think even Shauna came out and said, I didn't know it was like that. I think everybody realizes now we didn't think it was this. Right? So Alicia probably did it under different pretenses. Like her lawyer is like, look, she's just gonna post them here and there. Right? And she's and they're like, okay, sounds good to us. They didn't know she's gonna be making millions of dollars doing it and exposing them to predators and being bullied and having to hire security to follow them around. I didn't know that. I've not been told otherwise by anyone, except Shauna asks you to stop showing the kids. So you've been told by Shauna to stop showing her kids. Even if Shauna did it because Shauna didn't get any more money from you, sure, okay, fine. That's kind of that's kind of chachi, I get that, okay? But even if that's the case, the mother asked you to do something, took her consent away for you to show her children. You should have honored that regardless, and you didn't. She has the ability to move the kids if she truly does not want them living here. She can find them a different resource placement. That's not happened. And Alicia's lying here. Why, why lie about something we can just see? That's not on Shauna to do that. That's on Deshaun and Nevaeh to speak to their worker and the worker to do it. Are you saying the mom could be like, okay, I'm going to get you, move you somewhere else? No, because there's a judge CPS involved here. So Shauna just says, I want them over there. You think Alicia's going to be like, yeah, cool. No, they're going to have to go through the court system and everything else. So there still has to be involved everybody here doing that stuff. So she's a liar. Then she said this. I shifted my content in the new year, in the new year, away from the kids, just me being a mom. And I'm going to prove to you in just one second that that's a bullshit lie. Everyone is dragging up videos from three years ago as if I posted them today. Okay. <laughs> the ones we're dragging up, are you like putting a whole screenshot of everything that's wrong with them and then standing in front of it and talking about them? That's what we're posting. Not just a random video of the kids in the video. We're posting shit that you post that there is so inappropriately disgusting. That's what we're pointing out. So take it off then. My social media has evolved as I learn and grow. Okay. I've apologized to people in my life who I owed an apology. There's no need to rehash videos from the past. Okay. I'm sure you'd like that. We've moved on from them. N&D will stay here. We are not kicking them out. They wish to live with us and the court will most likely honor that. We love them and want them to be able to have the happy childhood they deserve. Well, that's, well, what's left of it. Now, the, what's the happy childhood that they have here? That you just buy them shit? That you feed them disgusting garbage all day long? What's the happiness here? See, Alicia is confused, and this is very eye-opening. She thinks that what they're, what they're going through right now is a happy childhood. Those kids aren't happy. Half those kids aren't happy. 
they're exposed to a lot of dangerous conversations to which we've uncovered in those past videos. Like somebody talking about doggy styling and the girlfriend and the little kid mentions it. We've had we've had one of the kids smacking Nevaeh's butt on camera. Okay, we've had them being yelled at. We've had them we've had Josh yelling at them. Okay, this isn't, this isn't happy childhood. These kids are being exploited day in and day out, and they have been. And Alicia says she shifted since January. Let's take a look at her TikTok, shall we? January, you damned liar. Well, let's look at her YouTube first because that's where I usually land. Since January. So three months she said she switched. And so let's go through the last. So three in in the last month, boom, kids, will it waffle? Okay, she does her lives and all of when she does her after school snack thing her kids come into those lives Specifically Nevea, by the way where she brought her in to say look. She's still here <laughs> And it was super cringy. Okay kids kids Alex another any after school ones gonna have the kids in it. Look Bree's 12th birthday one month ago James's birthday New Year's Eve the dockety dozen kids 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 Unboxing with Bree. We're only two months guys. 1 million subscriber celebration, kids. Well, she's doing the unboxing Christmas, so she says January after Christmas when she stopped. No, she's a damned liar. And that's just YouTube, everybody. See with our own eyeballs for some reason? Oh, my night went to 8.4 million. Oh, snap. Man, I hope TikTok gets banned. I'm gonna party. Okay, so this is Alicia. Kids, 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 kids. Almost all of her TikTok is just kids. And look at the numbers, okay? If you look at the numbers of who's on there, Alex gets on there, 2.4 million. If it's just a, if it's just Alicia going grocery shopping, 203,000. Her making a snack, 173. Okay, all the kids, 918. Kids. Kids, 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 kids. She's such, she's just a liar, man. Everything is kids. How far is this one? This one was done March 7th. So we're like, we're still in March here. Alex, when was this one? February 14th, still in February. She's just a liar, everybody. Why would you lie about something we can so easily debunk? So Alicia's sitting there saying everything's going well, and she had to, and again, Alicia has never responded to stuff like this ever before. So something is going on. If TikTok is banned, Alicia will lose five, what is she at, five million subscribers? F almost six million subscribers. This is where she gets most of her big bucks because she's huge on here. So in the end, Alicia can say all the things she wants to say, about like, oh no, I shifted everything when we can just go look and she hasn't shifted anything. It's the same damn content every single day. Maybe she shifted it from YouTube to like more, le to less kid stuff. Maybe she's not talking about all their medical things and all that stuff. That's fine. That's great. Good for you. But you're only doing that because you were pressured by this entire community to do that. And you're trying to, and she, again, she's threatening to sue me for calling her out for doing all that stuff. Right? And she's still growing. The thing with Alicia, she's still growing. People are just waking up to the Doherty Dozen. I'm not going to stop talking. If Alicia takes down all those shitty ass disgusting videos, the things she's talked about her kids in the past, and takes all the kids off the platforms, I will then take my videos down about Dr. Dozen. I've, I've said that time and time again. And yeah, they get me the most views, and I will still take them down. Okay? Alicia can't. Alicia has built up her wealth to a degree where she cannot live without it. She cannot live without being this person that she thinks she is. And recently in the past couple of months, it's been, it's the, t the tides have turned, okay? Nobody thinks Alicia is who she says she is. She's been lying about everything. She is not this person everybody thinks she is. She feeds her kids junk. She doesn't have time to parent them properly and give them the proper things that they, they all need. It's all gonna come out sooner or later. Half her kids are bullied. Half her kids are bullied inside their own home. Josh doesn't even seem like he's on board for any of this stuff because he always has a short temper with everything. These people are gross and an example of what not to do when trying to do this. So Alicia, you get, I'm gonna say douche, douche, douche of the day. <laughs> Enjoy it. So there you go, everybody. Full lid Friday. Don't you love it? These are good ones. Got a lot of stuff to talk about. This week coming up, there's not much. So if you guys have anybody, some people want me to talk about a bunch of families, about Abby Herbert or something and her short husband, about how they exploit. So maybe I'll bring them on board and start talking about them a little bit. Um, there's a couple I keep, you know, glossing over, but I want to talk about it. Jonathan Sakola Jolie, um, that Glenbin, what's her name? She came up with an apology video, which is just disgusting, which she's wearing. Um, lots to talk about this coming week, but if there's somebody you want me to cover, if there's a video, make sure you re reach out to me. Um, and make sure that we connect, okay? Instagram's probably the best place to do that. So I thank you so much for being here. Take a deep breath. Hey everybody, have some fun tonight. It's Friday night. Get a babysitter, send them off to the grandma and grandpa's house, go make some bad choices. You know what I'm saying?
or don't or make good choices make good choices but good, bad choices you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying do that have some fun take care of yourself a little bit of self-care this weekend that's what i'm thinking just like remember that you need to breathe in take care of yourself so that you can be the best for everybody around you don't fly flare american airlines and i will see you monday Let's go.